It's it's nice having something to play on the Switch. Give me an excuse to boot it up. Yeah. Yeah, I saw what was what's that game that you've been like you've mentioned it multiple times waiting for it to go on sale on Switch. The Last Faith. Yeah. It's on sale right now. But how much? I think it's like still like 20 or 30 bucks. Like, I don't think it's half off. Um, yeah, I think it was like 20 percent off or something. So. But I'm I waiting for a real sale. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I saw. Uh, oh, what was it? I don't know what game it was, but it was like a fifteen dollar game or something that was ten percent off. So it was literally like fifty like cents 50. off or something. <laughs> yeah, it was like re- yeah, buck fifty. It was so. Yep. I was like, that's. I mean, I guess it's technically a discount, but yeah. still. <laughs> yeah. Well, because every time I like scroll through the Xbox deals. Because like I have Game Pass Ultimate or whatever, it's like, hey, here's like some special deals that you get as like a Game Pass member or whatever. And so it's pretty much always like 10% off on like stuff that's already like on Game Pass or DLCs for games that are on Game Pass or something like Mm -hmm. that. And every time I look at it, I'm just like, okay, well, the season pass for this is $30 it's 10% off because I'm a game pass member, which means it's $27. That's really not if I, if I wasn't convinced to get the, the pass at 20 or at $30, I'm probably also not convinced to get it at $27. Like I yeah, appreciate it's like, How it. do you feel about not paying taxes on this? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so it is an interesting system where it's like sale and it's like, but not really. <laughs> Exactly. Well, you ready to get started? Welcome to the podcast where two longtime friends and sometimes a guest talk about their favorite games from the perspective of an average player. My name is Andrew Kimball. And I'm Dylan Wren. And we are your friendly neighborhood gamers. Welcome back to The Neighborhood, and thanks for spending part of your day with us today. This episode is something we call The Neighborhood Watch. If this is your first time listening, The Neighborhood Watch is an episode format we do once a month where we can talk about all of the games that we're playing that probably won't get their own dedicated deep dive, but we still want to give them some time in the spotlight. Dylan, we have been talking about nothing but FromSoft and Dark Souls for five weeks so we have a lot of other games uh that have stacked up for this neighborhood watch we probably won't get to all of them uh especially since before we dive in i have a question for you yep uh why you uh why you hiding your your xbox online status bro like i know you're playing games (laughs) but I, i never see you online what's up with that i think i turned it off when i was playing like call of duty uh so that my brothers didn't (laughs) continuously spam me with invites to play call of duty and so i forgot that i had done that and turned it back on recently (laughs) i figured it had to be something like that yeah most of the time when i get on xbox if it's after dinner and i look at my friends list there's a good chance that you're online yep but like for the last two weeks i look over at my friends list and you wouldn't be online and i'm like that's really weird i know he's not playing that much bloodborne (laughs) yeah Well, and it was, I think it was one of those things where like 90% of the time when I'm on Xbox, like I'm playing something that is either multiplayer, but like nobody I really know plays it or single player. So it doesn't matter. And then Call of Duty, it's like enough of my friends list also plays Call of Duty. But I was like, I don't like you guys don't understand. I'm not trying to play multiplayer. I'm not trying to play Warzone. I'm just trying to play zombies for an old call of duty not like a modern (laughs) call of duty so it was like i don't i don't want to get spammed with your invites to play call of duty because you see me on call of duty there is kind of that like unspoken pressure with multiplayer games or or even like current games i guess i think of like elden ring when it was current but it's like when 
the the group or the friends are actively playing that game and you've played it together before Mm -hmm. anytime you see somebody else online that's playing it you're like uh if i play that game right now they may send me like a party invite and i'm not feeling that right now so i guess i'm not playing that game right now i guess i'll play something else over here because i don't feel like socializing or having to be like nah not tonight i'm i'm not into it so it's there is kind of that weird balance yeah and sometimes just flipping yourself to offline is an easy easy out for that you know where it's just kind of like yep i don't don't bother me right now i am just playing my thing there's a part in the halig tree in elden ring where there are like two of the uh like Erd tree avatar things mm. the like tree monsters that do the scarlet rot so they're like the yeah. worst version of that and they're both like within like the same area and there was one session where i kept i was trying to beat the one like at the end of the run but there's also like cruce not crucible knights but like halo tree knights and stuff around it yeah. too and there was a point where i was like you know what let me see if dylan's on because i'll just make him <laughs> join me and help me fight this thing and then I was like, there's no way he's not playing yeah. something right now. I don't know what's happening. I think that was when I thought about yeah. it and was like, it's weird that I haven't seen him online in like a week and a half. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Normally when I'm offline, it's because of like, I didn't want to get spammed with invites or I was trying to record gameplay footage and I didn't want people's uh like Xbox stuff popping up all the mm. time. And so I yeah. swapped it to like, do not disturb or off or whatever so that i didn't get those and just forgot just forgot to turn it back on (laughs) so yeah i've i've definitely done that as well cool well uh we're back neighborhood watch we haven't done one of these in a hot minute we i was gonna say jokes on you we we've been talking about from soft games and we (laughs) we already worked in an elden ring (laughs) discussion (laughs) well so i've been been playing elden ring and bloodborne but uh i have a lot of other games on my list, as do you. So I feel like there's two ways we can approach this. We can either, A, I feel like we just talk about a couple of the things on our lists and go deeper into them and then maybe save the rest for later or whatever. Or we just try to kind of run down everything and give like top level feelings. Like obviously some of the things on my list, I've been playing more than others. I have deeper thoughts. Yeah. But still, either way, like we both have probably 10 plus games on our list. So I don't think we'll cover them all if we're trying to go in depth. Do you have a vibe for how you want to structure this particular neighborhood watch? Yeah, no, I I think kind of going in, like picking a few to go in depth, like a lot of the ones on my like, there's maybe three or four that I could go in depth on. And then the rest, it's more of just like. Oh, yeah. And obviously, I've still been playing Destiny 2 and (laughs) where it's not really like I don't have a ton to say about it. It's more so like these are the ones that uh, like Elden Ring, you know, it's like I'm still playing through Elden Ring. Exactly. Just kind of an update there. Okay, well, how about you pick one from my list that you're curious about um let's see let's start with final fantasy let's let's start there because i know you've been playing that one for a while and with how quickly you kind of went through final fantasy 16 i'm surprised that this one has not been beaten so yeah final fantasy 7 rebirth uh i bought it at launch and i've been playing it since then uh, Dark Souls month definitely kind of distracted me and pulled me away from it a little bit. I, I dedicated a lot of my time to to Dark Souls 3 in particular. I think I had mostly beaten one by the time I started playing Rebirth. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is one that we will do a deep dive on at some point. We'll probably have Caleb come back. Maybe we'll have some other guests. Uh, there's nothing concrete at this point, but it is one that's worth diving into because even if i filled this whole episode with my impressions right now i'm sure there'd be another episode's worth of stuff i could talk about in a deep dive because it's just it's a game that's doing a lot and not all of it i like so 
Final Fantasy Remake was very linear. It was taking the introductory section of the game and blowing it out into a full experience that had a little bit too much bloat and a little bit of just kind of filler content here and there. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is the sequel to that, and it's gone open world. Everything is kind of opened up. Mm. And that has created like two sides to a coin, I guess, because I really love seeing the variety in the world now. Like the first game was just like all Midgar. So it was all the same scenery. Everything kind of looked the same. This game, there's so many more characters, so much more vibrancy. There's so much more silly stuff going on. And I love all that about it. Uh, I like exploring the way it's kind of structured is you start in like an open zone. It's like the grassy area. And Mm -hmm. it makes sense if you think about this as like an old school RPG that they like have just made look modern. And then you'll move into like a new zone and you'll move like so you're kind of going from big zone to big zone to big zone. It's all part of like a large open world that technically is an open world, but you can't really just like. You could, but it'd be tedious to like get on your chocobo and ride from one side to the other. Like it is it's, it's kind like of open, segmented. It's open world, kind of like World of Warcraft was open world, where it's like right. this is where you're supposed to be right now, though, and it's going to be inconvenient for you to go anywhere else but this. Yeah, and you can't really go ahead mm-hmm. of where you're supposed to be. So, in each of those open areas, you get a, a variety of side quests. You get like some exploration based side quests you get some um combat based side quests you get some car or board game like gwent equivalent mm. side quests you get uh some like character side quests and then you have like your main story that you can follow and so i like probably about 50% of that content i really have been enjoying the main story stuff yeah And so I kind of beelined the main story into like the second region and then I was struggling with combat. And so I went back and I completely did all the side stuff in the first two regions. And now I'm at the point where I feel like the combat has kind of like I'm not struggling with it. I also have like a a lot of characters to play around with at this point. And so I've eased off of the side content stuff because... It feels like I, in theory and on paper and just thinking about the structure of the game, like I it, I don't hate it and it makes sense. But what it does when I'm actively playing it, and 16 kind of did this too, is that you're going through the main story stuff, you're, you're connecting with the characters or something really silly and wacky and entertaining is happening and it's the high production cut scenes and it's it's moving the plot forward and the characters that you have seen separated are now coming together and it's like all the stuff that you want to see in a story and in a, in an RPG. And then you hit a new region and they halt you for some nonsense reason. And they're like, okay, well now to progress, you have to go get this vegetable for your chocobo. And to do that, you have to beat three people at this board game. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. I just want to keep going with the story and see what happens. And so I'll get to I'll like I'll kind of hit those high highs of the story and then hit a new region and I'll stop playing for a while and then I'll I'll go on and I'll play Dark Souls 3 or I'll go on and I'll you know boot up whatever some of the other games we're going to talk about and then I'll be like you know what let me go back to Final Fantasy 7 mm-hmm. Rebirth I'll boot it up and I'll knock out those few little silly things that were in my way and I'll do it pretty quick like they're not yeah. super demanding and then I'll be back kind of on that momentum again and I'll pretty much play through to the next time they stop me in that way. And so it's partially maybe a mood thing. It's partially, you know, who knows what it is. It's it's just a really big video game and it's yeah. broken up kind of into very obvious sections. And so a lot of times those sections feel like a good time for me to take a break. And because yeah. of that, it's it's taking me a long time to get through this game. Like I know our friend Caleb, who was on the remake episode with me recently, this is like one of his favorite games of all time at this point. Like he's gone back and done all the side stuff. He loves all the silly mini games. And I will say, like a lot of a lot of the side stuff you're doing is like mini games. It's like mm-hmm. 
and there's a lot of variety in those mini games. Like there's one mini game that's essentially just um what is the car soccer ball game? Why am I Rocket League? Yeah, it's essentially just Rocket League, except you're playing as the like dog whose tail is on fire and you're like knocking soccer balls into nets. Yeah. And so there's a ton of really silly, zany stuff like that. And it, I appreciate that. But it also, like, because there's all that stuff in between, I feel like the main story is getting like spread really thin. And yeah. when I get back to the main plot, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what they were doing. I forgot about that. And so yeah. it's just kind of that the struggle with like big open world games. But I feel like yeah. some some balance the main plot and weave it into the side stuff a little bit better than this game is doing. Yeah. Well, and, and as you're talking about it, too, I'm I'm wondering if this is more prevalent with like JRPGs, too, because as you're talking about all of this, I'm just thinking of Persona 5, where it is very similar to like you have this really awesome like big thing where you're diving into like the dream world or whatever and you go through and you do it and then you hit the point where you've done it but they pause you because it's like well okay they like it it works off like a calendar system where it's like okay well it won't actually take effect it doesn't matter how early you get it done the change won't take effect until april 28th or whatever it is and <laughs> So then you're just kind of like going around, like doing little mini games to build up relationships with like the rest of your people and, you know, like getting a job and, you know, <laughs> like all of these other like random little side questy things um, before you get into like the next big story moment, which is like, I really like that game, but that's why I keep falling off of it is because I'll do like the really big, awesome story stuff. And then it's like, OK, well. I finished it and I still have a week and a half in game uh, before the thing happens. And so I just like it, you play each of those days uh, in the game. So uh, yeah. I'm just like, I don't feel like doing that right now. I want the big, cool stuff. So and when you like I said, when you think about the fact that this is like a PlayStation one JRPG that just yeah has been kind of reimagined, it makes sense that, you know, we've. Because you mentioned Final Fantasy 16, and I feel like that had the same kind of high highs, low lows. Mm. But I feel like the presentation, the like the world building, and just the fact that everything that you felt like you were doing, even if it was kind of like a quote unquote pointless, silly side thing, felt like it was serving the main plot a little bit more yeah. to me. Like there was a whereas in this game, like they 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 do. It's like, oh, there is a canon reason why I just got thrust into a chocobo race that is essentially Mario Kart, but on a giant chicken. Yeah. But really, it feels like you just wanted me to do this, which I mean, it, that part was pretty fun. But like the whole setup to why you're doing that is you get kind of like ambushed by these this like gang and some of your party gets put into this flimsy looking jail cell. And to get them out and to go find uh, your other party member who they won't tell you where he is until you've done this thing for them. You have to collect the vegetables, like I said, heal, like get your chicken back to full health and then race it. In reality, they never took Cloud's sword away from him. He's walking yep. around in this camp with a giant sword on his back and he could kill every single person in this camp if he wanted to. And also yep. the people they threw into prison... Tifa could kill everybody with her feet if she wanted to. And so yep. it's just like there's a suspension of disbelief where it's like, right, we want you to do this thing. So we're going to we're going to finagle the story to make it yeah. happen. Like Barrett still got his arm gun just in jail or whatever. <laughs> yeah, well, Barrett was the one that was missing. But oh, yes, okay. it's still like you figure Aerith is in there with her staff and can just like cast magic. So it's like, yeah. And the do the people that captured you just have like their fists or a club or maybe a gun but also it would take like all the ammo in the world to kill cloud apparently so yeah. it's just it's one of those things where it's like okay i understand why we're here what we're doing but it's kind of again it, it feels almost like that padding again except that i don't know that this wasn't part of the original like this could be true the true, game yeah. and also 
the the payoff for that, the race that I had to do was fun. Like I enjoyed it. It was mechanically sound. It was goofy. I've seen a lot of people comparing Rebirth to the Yakuza games because yeah, there's just say. so much silly nonsense that you're doing. But I feel like because of that, it is it's harder to maintain momentum with the main plot and story of the game. Like, yeah, you kind of lose the character's motivations when you're exploring an amusement park or whatever, you know, there's just, and I don't, I don't necessarily think it's bad or wrong. It's just, that's what this game is. And I'm yeah, the way I've been engaging with it is like, I play it for like a good three hour chunk and get really into it. And then I hit a wall and I take a break. Yep. So it's, it's one of those that, I'm definitely going to beat and we will pick apart even more. We'll dive into spoilers and we'll, yeah. we'll have like a dedicated episode on it. But those are kind of my initial impression, initial impressions. I feel like I'm probably around like halfway. I'm 30 plus hours into the game. So yeah, they got to be getting close to. Yeah, I think Caleb said he played it for like 100 hours, but he did like all the side stuff. So We'll see. We'll see where yeah. where I end up. Some of the side stuff is really fun. And yeah. some of it like so they have this game called Queen's Blood, which is there it's like a board game. And it's their like Gwent kind of equivalent. And it is a pretty smart, like solid board game. The problem is, is that the game forces it on you yeah. to progress in certain places. And so, like, I hit a point where I hadn't been playing it, and then there's, like, this big tournament quest, and because I hadn't been playing it, there was no real way for me to win this tournament quest, and so I just kind of had to, like, concede and bypass it. But then there will be other quests where it's like, oh, you need to go play these Queen's Bud players to get this thing, and then that thing will be what we need to, to move on. And it's like, the thing that was so great about Gwent aside from the fact that it was such a fun card game was that it was pretty much completely optional like you could learn how to play it in the beginning and then everything else was optional there was the tournament optional side quest anytime a character asked if you wanted to play you could say no like you could completely ignore Gwent but in Final Fantasy Rebirth there are points where you have to play Queen's Blood to progress so I got to the point where I like looked up just kind of like a good deck, like a good, because it is with cards, but then your cards become pieces on the board. So I looked up like a good deck and I found one that so far I've been winning with pretty consistently and I, it's helped me kind of grasp the yeah. game better. And so it's like, I could see on a replay me getting really into Queen's Blood, which is kind of how I was with Gwent, yeah. where it was like initially it was too much, but I feel like having, like forcing the player to engage with it to progress is kind of a a problem (laughs) yeah like that's that side stuff is in a a interesting spot where it's i like the options of doing a bunch of side stuff i like to especially in like games that i really enjoy i love running down all of the side stuff but it's nice to not be forced into doing it because like if you're use the witcher three i think that's a great example but even like elden ring or something where it's like if i want to do like a quick replay of elden ring or something like that there's a lot of optional stuff that i'm never forced to do in that game Mm -hmm. like i don't have to do Rani's quest line if i don't want to it is completely optional but or like you said with pretty much a lot of the stuff in the witcher three it's like yeah you probably want to do some side stuff just to like stay leveled enough to like not just insta die to whatever the main quest is, but you kind of get to pick and choose. You don't have to do all of it. It's never forced on you versus this, where it sounds like it's kind of just arbitrarily being like, yeah, now you have to play this game now, which is, I don't know. Yeah. And I don't want this to be a, a rebirth episode. So this will kind of be my last point, but like I've been complaining a lot. The combat still incredible and actually better they've they've added like team moves i can't remember what they call them but essentially like you can attack with two characters and they'll like buff each other and then like when you build up certain you meet like certain parameters or meters or whatever you can do like big team attacks and so they synergy i think is what they call them synergy attacks and so 
that mixed with the fact that now your party size has like doubled. So you're you're still always only taking three characters into combat, but you have the rest kind of on the peripheral that can do certain like assist things. And then with the ones you have in combat, you can combine like you can basically like launch Tifa off of Cloud's sword to do like a super kick kind of thing. Yeah. So the combat was already really fun in remake and they've taken that and elevated it in rebirth. So there's there's a lot to love and a lot yeah. to enjoy in rebirth. And there are there was one weekend, like a Sunday afternoon, where all I did was just kind of explore one region and knock out all the side stuff. And I just was kind of I was in the mood for that. I was just zoning out checking off the boxes, doing the open world thing, and I was having a lot of fun. So it's it's a game that, like, in the middle of it right now, I'm kind of mixed and kind of curious to see where I'll end up. I think the story and how it comes together at the end will do a lot for my, like, final ranking. Yeah. But definitely, it's it's one of the more, like, mixed bag games I've played in a while for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me throw it to you then what is skur ritual so skur ritual is a game that i've only played a demo of it um because the demo it's like it is old school well you can rank it above sekiro then well that's true (laughs) old school kind of wave based call of duty zombies Hmm. but it's made by like a team of five people it's like an indie game okay and so like you load into a map it's like if you've played call of duty zombies like you're going to be familiar with how the game works because it's like it spawns a bunch of i think they call them quiet ones in this game or something like that but you kill them you get points you can use those points to buy weapons or perks or open doors uh and then there's like this big sprawling easter egg that uh takes place on the the map that uh it kind of directs you to how like where you need to go to like start parts of it the demo is one full map there are four full maps in like the game itself and so i've i haven't beaten the easter egg on the first map but i've been like messing around with it a little bit and i've been enjoying it it's kind of i don't know it's it's one that's i think tough because I have been also playing a lot of Call of Duty Cold War zombies. Um, I beat all of those like Easter egg maps. And so I was like craving something more. And then I saw like this game just like pop up in the new game section. And I watched the trailer for it. And I was like, this is just Call of Duty zombies. Uh, And so I installed the demo, tried it out. And I was like, this is actually pretty cool. That said, (laughs) I have realized how much I miss how good Call of Duty feels and how it controls and how it sounds. Because in this game, it feels a lot more floaty. It feels like the guns don't feel like they have power. Mm. And or and like they don't sound like they have power. Like the shotgun is not like the big boom that you get from right. like a Call of Duty shotgun or something. And so I know like sometimes people will joke during like the game awards of like, oh, Call of Duty's up for like best sound design or whatever. And it's like when you when you play a different game that is essentially <laughs> just Call of Duty, but not, yeah. you realize like, oh yeah, their sound is really good. Their their like controls and movement and all of that uh and and just shooting mechanics and everything is really good. So like it it is not as refined it is not as good as like call of duty that said i think the past i haven't played the past couple of call of duties because i'm just waiting for them to come to game pass for free you see that activision game sale on xbox recently i'm like yeah I did. that's a fire I sale did. <laughs> i did i was like they're getting ready to announce in their like next uh-huh. xbox conference thing that they have they're like and today you can play all of the call of duty games and i'm just i'm just waiting for it um but i think the past two have not had like your traditional like round based zombies mode i think like the the zombies mode has been sort of like an open world map like kind of a war zone type of thing 
with like different they they added this kind of map this kind of mode in in cold war um but it was just like one time in cold war but i think that's what the mode is in the most recent couple of games gotcha like i said i haven't played them so i've seen like now that i've played the game i've seen a lot of like zombies like youtubers talking about scare ritual um just to kind of be like oh this is like going back to what old school call of duty zombies was but it is really cool i do you know i I am surprised no other studio like it's this is to my knowledge like the first game that has taken like sort of the call of duty zombies formula and been like blown it out into its own game which i've been kind of surprised by just yeah. because to me that seems like a great form like i i personally really like doing call of duty zombie stuff because i enjoy sort of the challenge but also like the learning the the easter egg steps and doing those and so there's a lot about scare ritual that i enjoy because like you can change the the difficulty settings a lot easier and i don't think it locks you out of like the easter egg like it does in call of duty zombies so if you wanted to have a way more chill experience you can uh you also don't have to have like an ign or youtube guide up to figure (laughs) out what the heck you're supposed to do like it's kind of it'll give you like hints in game of like here's what you're kind of supposed so it'll be like okay you need to go here and pick up this lantern which is basically just like a black light and then you have to then it'll just tell you find the combination and so like you still have to go around the map and figure out like okay where is this combination but it at least is giving you direction of like what am i supposed to do so you're you're not having to constantly like look stuff up um so i've enjoyed that because like i said i i had been playing call of duty zombies i had always had to you know like watch a youtuber walk through of like here's what you need to do and then have like the guide to pull up so that as i'm learning how to do it is right there whereas this it was much easier to just kind of jump in and do and so it's it's interesting it's something that if you like call of duty zombies may be worth checking out um i think it's i think it's like 25 or 30 bucks full priced so like like it's not a full priced game uh like 70 dollars or whatever so but it seems cool. I, I'm interested to see, you know, like if they keep adding more maps to it, if they keep, you know, supporting it, if it's one that I've played enough and enjoyed enough that I'm like, yeah, I'll probably go ahead and pick it up pretty soon here just to like support the the devs and kind of be like, yes, I would like to see more games like this, you know. So it's I, I think it's base or like. There is a, I think it's the maid of Skr, yeah, or something like it's that. It's based. Um, um, I have the like Xbox page for it pulled up. Yeah, it's based on the. It's the spiritual successor to the award-winning British horror Maid of Skr, Scare, Scare, however you say it. So yeah, well, yeah, and, so it's based on a property that just we're not mm-hmm. familiar with. <laughs> yeah, well, because I i went and i looked that game up because i was like i'm pretty sure i've seen that on like game pass or i got it as like a games with gold at some point or whatever i don't think that is round based zombies i think i think that is more of like a first person like horror survival game so i was surprised when this one was like actually round based zombies and like i said it, it seems like a a genre or an area that is like ripe for the picking because i know a lot of people who have enjoyed call of duty zombies and maybe this is just a very small subsection of people that i i am more familiar with because i also enjoy zombies but like i know that there's been a lot of like we are not happy with how zombies is right now and so it seems like this is sort of a a audience ripe for the picking to kind of come in and be like Hey, you like old school zombies? This is old school zombies. Like I said, the only issues that I've had with it are just kind of like it doesn't feel as good as as Call of Duty. And it's hard, like, when you've been releasing like 25 years worth of games, I don't know how many, (laughs) but it's got to be pretty close to that at this point, uh, unfortunately, uh, for us, because that means we're old. But 
like when you've got 25 years worth of like Call of Duty, it's hard to beat that experience. But it's it's worth checking out, I would say, especially if you like zombies, because like I said, the first map is free if you get the demo. So it's interesting because like looking at these screenshots, it it gives me um, Hunt Showdown vibes, just kind of like in its aesthetic, whereas yeah. I think it's it was very smart of Hunt Showdown to lean into the these guns suck and we're not trying to be Call of Duty like you have to yeah. aim and hit the head and like these guns are going to behave like they're from the 1800s or whatever. I don't is it that far back? I don't remember, but it's I think so. I think 18 or 1900s, but it's it's very early 1900s if it's 1900s. Whereas this game kind of having that aesthetic but trying to be more of like a you know a bunch of enemies are coming at you at once you got to kill them quickly probably is it makes the um comparison much more glaring to games that have done this mm-hmm. before like your call of duties yeah. or even maybe your left for deads or um back for bloods where it's like yeah the the guns are it's much more obvious that they don't feel as good but I do like aesthetically I I like that they kind of have found an identity even if you know they're basing it off this this property. Uh it looks it looks interesting. It looks like one that I can't wait to hear you talk about more and I probably yeah. will maybe play once if you convince me to play it with you sometime but won't <laughs> won't be my thing. Yeah. We're we're going to try to convince you to play some Call of Duty Zombies once they come to Game Pass. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've played Call of Duty Zombies and I like the Call of Duty part of it. It Like the the thing you love about it is the thing that I don't like about it, which is the like yeah. hunting down the Easter eggs and solving the puzzles. And I was much more I would much rather have played Left 4 Dead back in the day than Call of Duty Zombies because. Yeah. Just let me mode like give me the power fantasy. Don't don't give me the like, oh, I have to board up these windows and build up this currency and decide which weapons I want. We have to optimize yeah. our team and there's no way we're getting past wave 20. <laughs> yeah. I I thought it was fun casually and I think it's a cool idea. It's just not something that I got like, like it never hooked me super deep. Right. Right. But it, you're right. It is weird that like more people haven't tried to yeah. imitate like that formula. Yeah, well, because I'm thinking of like Left 4 Dead, right? So Left 4 Dead, you've got Warhammer Vermintide. You've got Warhammer Darktide. You've got uh, that World War Z game that we played. You've got Aliens Fireteam. And there's probably There was even the Gears 5 like horde mode thing, like the escape. Yeah. I never played it, but it was like a dlc or expansion that came out for gears 5 where it was like a team of three had to escape from the tunnels as the hordes were coming after them yeah yeah so like you've got even like halo sort of had like firefight horde mode i I guess horde mode sometimes is a little bit more gears because i think they they did it well like there's horde mode which is just survive the waves but like there was a literal left for dead left for dead kind of mode in gears 5 where it was like you you the party the characters travel to the bottom of this right of this like tunnel system and then they awaken the horde and the idea is they're trying to get Get out out. and escape i never played it but it seemed very much that vibe and then of course you have back for blood which was right made by some of the left for dead talent but still yeah but like you i guess my my thinking is like okay so we've we've seen a bunch of like left for dead type of games granted there was a pretty big gap between like Left 4 Dead and when the first kind of Left 4 Dead likes came out. I, yeah, I guess. But like I said, I'm pretty sure Call of Duty Zombies has been around since like World War II. I was II? in my teens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I think like, World War II was like the first World Zombies at movie. War. Or yeah, yeah, World at War. That's what I meant. Yeah. And and that was when I was like. 16 17 and so that's been a good 16 years <laughs> five since. six years yeah <laughs> uh so it's it's kind of like they've they've had a ton of time to come up with like a game similar to this and 
this is the first one that I've seen that has really kind of mimicked the formula, I guess. Well, I hope it works out for him. Yeah. It seems like, at least in the zombies community, there have been a bunch of people who have been kind of rallying around it. And yeah. Rallying. yeah. Like, it, I think it's got pretty favorable reviews on Steam currently. And so it's. Uh, it's good to see like, cause I think it's a small studio. I think it was, I think somebody that I was watching said it was made by like five people. And so it's like, yeah, this is great for them. You know, yeah, like, that's people crazy. Taking their, taking their game and championing it and like having a good time with it and kind of being like, yeah, you guys gave me something that I've been missing. So, but yeah, so that's scare, scur, scur ritual. <laughs> uh, <laughs> however you say it but yeah so you want to talk about your multiplayer game or your single player game (laughs) either one uh you want me to rub it in your face or talk about a game we both appreciate (laughs) uh either i feel like i appreciate both of these games i'm just sad that i can't play one of them (laughs) (laughs) well i've played i i played hell divers 2 further like i played it first yeah. <laughs> i guess so it has seniority okay we'll give it that yeah yeah which is it's an interesting i feel like story for you because like i think initially you were kind of like yeah i don't care i don't you know and then the next thing i heard you were like so i've been watching a lot of tiktoks and i'm kind of in on the hell divers yeah so i didn't really know okay i kind of thought hell divers was another one of those left for dead likes just kind of based on trailers Mm -hmm. and stuff and so i was like yeah it seems kind of interesting kind of cool whatever like i saw the trailers i liked the tone and then it launched out of nowhere to me like i haven't really been keeping up with release dates too much this year and yeah it really just kind of blew up like a bunch of people in our friend group got into it like in our discord and stuff and then it just it had its moment in social media it still kind of does and i think part of it was when it released like it it released in a window that was more advantageous to it but i think it also releasing a like kind of in the same time frame as like skull and bones and yeah suicide squad to just major games that flopped that wanted to be <laughs> hell divers and hell divers took kind of just a simple concept and they fleshed it out in a really solid way and they put a a fun tone on it and then they just they made it like it's just fun it's just goofy silly fun like there's emotes where you can hug or high five or fist bump like your your friends and and you're you have an awesome cape and that's like 30% of why the game is so great because your cape just looks amazing as you're running through (laughs) the environments and diving on the ground and then your cape gets covered in like guts or oil depending on what you're fighting and and it it does a really good job of giving any kind of player something like the first time I hopped into a match by myself just to try to understand what the game was doing I was on like newbie ultimate baby mode and I still died like three times yeah, but then once I kind of understood the way the game worked and like what it what it was asking of me and what it wanted me to do, like I can run a lot of missions up to a certain point by myself, no problem. But the game can get like super sweaty and hard too, where you like need a, a squad to pull through. And I guess I should explain like the yeah. idea is you are a hell diver, which is part of this like military group f- that is defending super earth and your two main enemy factions are like the bugs and the robots and it does this really cool thing where the world is kind of always shifting there's like one guy i think his name is matt something who is controlling the story of hell divers and how like when when factions move what they're doing like where the hell divers need to focus their support and they have like these big goals for everybody and if like all of the player base can achieve this goal you get rewards for it and so it just has this really cool community aspect and so basically you you 
you are a hell diver, you get your weapon, you get your gear, you launch yourself down onto this planet, and then you fight and you kill whatever enemy you're supposed to kill until you die. And when you die, they ship in a new hell diver to replace you. And like <laughs> you keep playing that that character, it's still you, but like the idea is that it's a new person. They're just churning out these hell divers. And yep. so you have your main guns and your weapons and stuff, but you also can just call in ridiculous weapons and like airstrikes and bombs and things like that that are kind of what help you turn the tide against these overwhelming forces and so the idea is you drop onto a map you have a main goal and then you have all these kind of like side goals that you can do while you're on the map and the and you have a time limit for how long you can be there before you won't be able to get your your big um like weapon drops and and reinforcements and stuff like that and so you're trying to kind of achieve these things as many as you can while ultimately doing the main goal and then extracting within the time limit and the more stuff you do the better score you get the more rewards you get and so that's kind of the incentive and it can be really easy to get overwhelmed and so like the idea is that a squad of four can bring different things to the group and yeah can help you know be a cohesive unit the thing that makes Helldivers unique and the thing that like adds an extra layer of magic to this game is that there's friendly fire. <laughs> so I played one night with Phil and Eric from the Wait For It podcast and they died to my like backpack laser thing that I had equipped a ton of times. I had like such a high percentage of friendly fire at the end of the match and they kept mm. blaming me. I'm like, the thing is automatic. I'm not shooting it. So you guys just need to pay yeah. attention. But then when I unequipped it and equipped something else, I had like 0% friendly fire. So <laughs> <laughs> so like that adds a whole nother layer because it'll be like, okay, you're all kind of fighting. You're going towards this like one nest or whatever. And then all of a sudden somebody drops like a massive like armament yeah. this giant nuke into the pit and he's like oh guys get out of there quick 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 and you know and they have to try to run away because if not they're dead and they when you die you drop all your stuff and if you have reinforcements available which you have a pretty generous amount you drop back in and it's not really a huge deal but you have to go find that stuff again if you want it or you have to wait for it to be on cooldown to get it again so it just adds like another yeah both strategic kind of layer but entertaining layer as well because that's like where a lot of the memes and stuff come from or from the friendly fire yeah so i've played with um john i've played with devin i've played with phil and eric a few times like i've it's it's been a really fun experience i haven't played as much recently just because i've been kind of trying to focus in on some of these single player games that i want to get finished yeah. but it is it is a game that it satisfies that uh, carrot on a stick kind of thing where like every time you boot it up, you're like, oh, let me just knock this out to get this reward. Let me knock this out to get this reward. And that's right. another thing they do that's really cool is the the free battle pass thing you get. So essentially they give you a free battle pass and then you have like a, at this point, I think it's like two you can buy, but you unlock currency kind of like Fortnite V-Bucks. You unlock, unlock yeah. that with the battle pass, but you can also find it in the missions. So mm -hmm. you could theoretically, if you play enough and if you're, you know, really, if you play yeah. enough, you could get the premium passes for free as well. So yeah. it's, it's like, very the, Go ahead. Yeah. As you say, so they've got like an option for like the, the people who don't want to spend a bunch of money or can't mm -hmm. spend a bunch of money. It's just like, hey, if you play enough, like you'll have it. But they also have like busy dad mode where it's kind of like <laughs> you can just you could just buy the battle pass because you have a job and it's probably like 10 bucks or whatever. And so like, you're probably fine doing that and aren't going to be too upset by that. Uh, yeah. All. Yeah. And another thing about those like big community goals I was talking about earlier, you could view this as a pro or a con depending on how you feel about it. But like I can just log in after not playing for a week and get the rewards for the community goal that we achieved this week. Like, I didn't have to launch into the mission and yeah, it's not like you've got to kill a hundred bugs in order to now qualify. It's just they do have personal goals that will get you more rewards that you do that yeah. are like, yes, go kill this thing. But the big community ones, you just have to play the game. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, and it's just such a cool, you know, like a lot of my exposure to this because Sony won't put it on Game Pass. Just, just but, join the PC uh yeah the dark side <laughs> yeah i know i know um but a lot of my exposure to it has been like clips like i you know whether it's you posting clips or just like our friends or random people but also just the the sort of s- story narrative that has sprung up just kind of around almost organically because it's not like there it's not like there's a story mode right there's not like a uh you know here cutscenes. scenes no. here is like this so it's more of like an organic story that has sprung up because it's like we're well, pushing it's, the bugs back yeah it's and, because or the, we're pushing the robots back essentially the guy i mentioned earlier is dming the game and so he will tweak and adjust to the world state like recently we, the the hell divers exterminated all the robots and so there was this like for a day or so there was this whole thing of people being like are they going to introduce a new faction? Did like, do we really destroy the robots? Like what is going on? And then come to find out, of course, like the next day was like, Oh no, they had secret bases over here. And the robots are, because it'd be kind of ridiculous. The game came out in February and all of a sudden they're introducing a new faction, but it was still that moment of like, we did it. Did we do it? You know, like, and so there's those kind of emergent moments of, because this guy is just kind of like he's got his finger on the pulse and he's tweaking like how the world state functions and what the goal yeah. of the super earth hell divers are it uh i f- i feel like that works really well as opposed to you know trying to run some game by committee and by the time you yeah. pivot to what the players are are into you're way too late yeah yeah but it, it it seems really cool. It seems yes. like it's one that is moving up my list uh, for like eventually when I decide to pick up a PlayStation 5, probably when the PlayStation 6 comes out and you're like, hey, I have a six. Do you want my five? <laughs> uh, like, but I mean, it's kind it's of unfortunate because like, this... it, it'd be nice to play it like while it's the while it's current in the player bases yeah because like titanfall 2 fantastic multiplayer game rough to go back to now i'm sure yep yep so but it's it is one that looks very cool and uh, who knows maybe i will pull the trigger and just see if my computer can handle it you will love this game when you finally get it like this this 100 be your will. new destiny potentially <laughs> like it doesn't have nearly the like yep like the um, foundation and legs that destiny has, but just like that kind of loop of the, like the grind, like that is yeah. this game will satisfy that for sure. Yeah. 100%. Nice. Well, why don't you pick one more to dive deep into? And then if we feel like doing sure. shout outs, we can after that. Yeah. Um. So I will talk about rim world anomaly because that is, has been the one that I've been playing a ton of recently which is just so it's an expansion for rimworld rimworld is a story generator i think is how it's labeled on like i think that's what it is called or it has called itself but essentially it's it's got a few different scenarios the standard one is like three people crash land onto a planet and you're trying to build a a base um you can assume direct control of your your little characters and stuff but that's mostly just for like combat purposes like you can try to micromanage them into doing certain things but like that really is not how the game is meant to be played it's kind of just like when combat happens you kind of draft them up and tell them where to stand and what to do but for the most part you're just kind of setting like their priorities as far as like the work that you want them to do And so it kind of functions in a way like Majesty does, where it's like, okay, I've got all these guys. This one's good at being a doctor. This one's good at cooking. This one's good at going out and hunting. Uh, And so it's like I'm going to set like their priorities on like a scale of how how much do I want you to do this versus like if you have nothing else to do, go dig a hole uh, (laughs) or something like that. And and so you kind of just set those and sort of let them go. And and all throughout this, you've got different storytellers, I think is what they call them in the game. And so 
they are sending different events at you. And so sometimes those events can be positive. Sometimes those events can be uh, neutral. Sometimes those can be bad. So like a positive event might be a, you know, group of traders shows up and has some, some different goods that they can sell you. Uh, they'll also buy some of like your ex, like if you grew a bunch of food or something and just have a ton of it, they'll buy some of that off of you. Neutral events may just kind of be like a, a random visitor walks through or whatever. And then they've, a lot of the stuff is negative events where it's just kind of like raiders turn up or toxic fallout starts happening or <laughs> all of these different, you know, just awful things, you know, like a lightning storm happens and starts setting a bunch of stuff on fire. Like, and it's just kind of like, what is the, the sort of narrative that you're, your little colony develops. So there have been several DLCs. The first one I think was royalty. And so that really fleshed out like the empire faction and, and let you use psychic powers. And each one of them I think has added like a new way to win the game. The base game you win if you build a ship and like you, you research how to build like Starflight and stuff. And then you build a ship and you, defend it from everybody else on the planet who's trying to attack it and steal it and then you get your colonists kind of off of the planet and somewhere else you can also just end the game by dying which is how i usually end it or (laughs) there's a lot can go wrong like it's you know it's like oh okay this person got an infection in their arm and so it's like well do i hope it gets better do i amputate their arm oh, well, now they've, you know, they're upset because I amputated their arm and they've decided (laughs) to go into a murderous rage uh, and they've killed another one of my colonists. And so now I don't have a doctor anymore. And uh, so there's just a lot of that that can happen and sort of spiral your your colony into oblivion there. I was playing the other day and one of my characters had just like a chemical fascination. And so whenever he would get really stressed out. He would want to do drugs. Uh, <laughs> and so he got he got addicted to space cocaine. Uh, and then I ran out of space cocaine. Uh, and so he went through withdrawals. Uh, and when he was upset because he was withdrawing, he set my base on fire and killed everybody. And so it's just kind of like that's that is the story of that colony. <laughs> Hashtag like, just rim world things. Exactly. <laughs> and so like I said, royalty, the first DLC, they added uh, like end game where you could ascend up through the ranks of royalty and become royalty yourself. And so it added like an alternate win condition. There was also idea ideology, which added like it really fleshed out sort of like the religion side and or the uh, I think like the religions and like the faction side of the game. Um, and kind of fleshed them out, made them a bit different. I forget exactly what the win condition is for that one, but there's some sort of like you can follow that sort of down uh, its path. I think if you like build up your your ideology, uh, you can win the game that way somehow. I I don't know that I've ever done that one, uh, and if I did, it was a long time ago. The most recent one before this was biotech where they added a bunch of like genetic stuff and they added a bunch of like alien races and stuff um and so that's been cool and that one like you could become a vampire could also become like a like robot overlord and like control a bunch like an army of robots and stuff and so that one was really cool and so anomaly just came out like a few weeks ago as of recording this and that one is kind of like the Eldritch Horror mm. expansion. And so it's like you can study like this monolith or whatever. And if you start studying it, I guess normally there will be some just like random, like easy versions of like some of the the Eldritch Horror stuff. Like it doesn't go down that route unless you choose to engage with it. But um, there will be like the occasional like a, a small group of zombies has turned up or, you know, like this random like flesh beast has turned up or something like that. And so I did a playthrough where I built my little colony up, 
they were studying, you know, the the monolith and and learning about it. And as you learn about it, you keep unlocking like different entities that will come and attack your base. And then you can capture them and study them to learn more about like what's going on. And a lot of them have some like cool events. So like there's one that would plunge the entire map into darkness. And so you had to like go around like if you were in the darkness, things would attack you. And so you had to light up your base to keep all of your colonists safe. Uh, And because it was dark, like your food wasn't growing. And so you had to like push out into the darkness with lights in order to find like the cause of the the darkness so that you could destroy it Mm. and lift the darkness there was another where like this entity would come and like like hypnotize one of your colonists and then disappear like run off and be invisible and you had to like and then every it would keep coming back and doing that to more and more of your colonists and so you were kind of at a race to like go f- track it down learn how to locate it find it so you could kill it so that you could wake all your colonists back up there would also be kind of like there was this massive pit that opened in in the world and you could like go down into it and fight stuff uh in order to close the pit or else it would keep like sending like these fleshy like xenomorph type monsters at you um so there's a lot of really cool stuff and (laughs) eventually you kind of like keep learning about it and are able to kind of hit the point where you can either awaken the monolith or close it off or something like that and so uh i you know did that got the credits and was like oh that was really cool and so i've just now been kind of playing off and on some RimWorld stuff um, just because it's a really good game that scratches that sort of majesty itch. And now there's also kind of like the Eldritch Horror part of it. Uh, the only downside is, as of right now, I've kind of like seen all of the the different entities in the game. And so I'm kind of waiting on just like the eventual mods that will add more and more and more of that stuff into the game. Cause that's, I guess the other side to this is like it has four or five official expansions, but then there's a bunch of like unofficial expansions that are available on like the steam workshop or in, in right. mods and stuff that you can kind of like, some of them do like a total conversion. Some of them are just like quality of life stuff. And so there's a whole like suite of them that kind of just expands on the original game. So it tries to like keep the same vibes of the official stuff, but just like blow them out, offer more options and that sort of a thing. So uh, it's a really good game, especially if you like just sort of immersion or emergent stories and kind of like a majesty type of thing too, where you're not really, taking direct control you're just kind of it's kind of like simsy a little bit too where you're not necessarily like hardcore controlling your character the entire time it's more so like i am setting these up and kind of seeing what happens and just trying to you know trying my best to make a colony that doesn't just like spiral out of control when somebody gets malaria and and everyone (laughs) dies you know so but yeah it's it's a cool like I will always recommend RimWorld uh, if you like those kind of games. It's it's a one hundred percent like even if it's not on sale, I think it's worth getting. So yeah, it sounds very up your alley. And this, as soon as you said cosmic horror, I was like, oh lord, uh, he's never gonna play another game ever again. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it is. It is a very like it, it has very strong like SCP vibes. Cool. Well. We have lots of other games we've been playing. Uh, We have a few that tied into Dark Souls Month and a few that we will. And well, basically, we've got Bloodborne and Elden Ring. Yeah. And Elden Ring, we are going to discuss in depth when the DLC comes out. Uh, And then we've got a few other games that we'll probably bring up uh, in future content. I know that one of mine I've just kind of started, one of mine I'm playing in preparation for a YouTube video. So. There's definitely some future opportunities for us to talk about some more of these games. Are there any that you wanted to shout out before we moved into housekeeping? No, no. I I mean, 
Well, shout out Control. Um, I played through the main story of Control again with the Ultimate Edition. It's still super good. Yeah. It will probably become a video or uh, in-depth episode, depending on what we decide to do with it. But super good game. If you haven't played it, that's one you should check out. So yeah, it's on Game Pass. And yeah, and it's it's really yeah. I will second what you said. Yeah. It's a very a very fantastic game. It's very fun to play. Yeah. Very weird, mysterious, but it's like a lot shorter than I remember it being too. Yeah, like the main game. I think I I think I did like all of the side stuff the first time I played it, but this time I was just kind of going back through the story part. And it went a lot faster than I remembered it going. Yeah, it probably helps being familiar with like the environment a little bit and kind of like knowing the language of the game. But yeah, it's yeah, it it blends the kind of weird remedy nonsensical story stuff with a really fun movement and like combat system. So it's kind of like the yeah. best of both worlds. Yeah. 100 percent yeah that's one that definitely deserves a deeper dive it's just a matter of when <laughs> mm-hmm, exactly but i i do feel like that it, we will get there eventually cool well this is our uh first neighborhood watch back after dark souls month uh we will be back to regularly scheduled program at this programming at this point um we've got some deep dives that we've got in the works we've got some interviews that we're lining up so a lot of stuff to be excited about on the podcast front if you enjoy the show if you enjoy the podcast if you find it entertaining we'd greatly appreciate a five-star review on spotify or a five-star review and or five-star rating and review on apple like those two are the big dogs in the podcasting space so if we can get some momentum mm-hmm. over there, it will definitely help our reach. Good Pods, I know a lot of the kind of indie podcasting scene is over on Good Pods. So like if you use that platform, we would definitely appreciate some love over there as well. Basically, any love you can give us on your podcasting app of choice, we would appreciate and it will help us in the battle against the algorithm. If you want to be part of episodes like what we had for dark souls month at the end with our community episode join our discord that's where we we round all that up and host those things if you want to just chat with us about what you've been playing or about the music you like or about what you're watching on tv join our discord we have channels for all those kind of things if you want to talk about the elden ring dlc when it comes out we have an elden ring channel so Definitely join our Discord. That is the place to come hang out with us. We're on social media, on all the uh, other platforms. Well, not all of them. We're on Instagram and the app formerly known as Twitter. I cannot be bothered to make all of the profiles that spawned out of people freaking out about Twitter changing its name. And I also don't want to make a Facebook group. So like, join our Discord because that's the main place and that's the best place to uh, interact with us. Dylan, what's going on on YouTube besides the comment section dumpster fire yeah. on our yes. <laughs> ranking so, video? So yes, we we recently released a a ranking video of the From Software games. Uh, if you listen to our episode on that, it's basically just the short version of that episode. But like, God forbid, we call the From Software games souls likes and not actual souls games or souls uh, borns or souls borns uh if you're a well-adjusted normal human being you understand what we mean but there were several people that need to be assessed uh, <laughs> that just couldn't handle the fact that we called it a souls like but there is also some good discussions in some of the comments and uh you know it's it's picked up some traction it's picked up you know uh we are very very close to getting like passing our our milestone uh number of subscribers to unlock the first tier of advertisement eligibility um so if you're listening to this and you're not subscribed to our youtube channel it would be super cool if you could go subscribe to it 
uh, especially if we are, have not broken the 500 mark yet. And I think right now we've got nine left to go. And then uh, we will have another video coming out this week, right? Yes. When this goes live, it'll... Okay, yeah. What is it? It's probably not labeled. It is labeled as video. So maybe it's going to be a control video. Maybe it's going to be something else. We will see. (laughs) I will be putting that together this week, probably. Nice. So I can't wait to see what it is. (laughs) We also release our podcast episodes on YouTube. So if you're listening from there, thank you. We appreciate you. Yep. Some of our Dark Souls episodes were some of our like most viewed podcast episodes on YouTube. So hopefully we can keep that momentum going. Uh, but yeah, yeah, this has been our uh, return to the Neighborhood Watch and our return to normal content. We will be back next week with a brand new episode. But until then, thank you all so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of the Friendly Neighborhood Gamers podcast. If so, we would greatly appreciate your help in growing the show and the community by giving us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any other podcasting app that allows it. We also have some great videos on our YouTube channel, including reviews, rankings, and other topics. We would really appreciate you checking it out. And if you want to keep up with everything going on in the neighborhood, follow us on Instagram and Twitter and feel free to jump in our Discord server. We hope to see you there. Links for everything are in the podcast description. Thanks again for listening. And remember, stay stay friendly, friendly, gamers. gamers.